Hi guys, I'm Chris. And I'm James. And welcome to the Better Out Than In. Now today is very exciting because uh, we're getting to try another Australian whiskey, which as you know, I am an absolute fan of. Uh, I really love some of the expressions that uh, that some of the distillers are doing out of, uh, out of Australia, um, out of here. Uh, and um, yeah, it, it's always interesting to me to see some of the flavors that they come up with. Now this one is the Knot. Uh, it is uh, their, uh, what is it? It's their single malt bourbon cask, uh, which is really uh, interesting. Now, uh, Nantes is actually in the Tasmanian Highlands, uh, which is really interesting because they're basically, I think it's above a thousand feet, yep. uh, which right. means that the, the whiskey actually interacts more with the wood mm -hmm. uh, than your standard sort of Scotch uh, whiskey. Uh, which gives it a fairly unique flavor. I'm not sure whether you can see that or not, but it's not actually like dark. It's very light. I would have picked something that interacts with wood to be a lot darker, particularly as you said, it's a bourbon cask, right? Yeah. It's yeah. very pale to me for that. Yeah. So it's clearly the opposite of what I was thinking. Which will be interesting to see what kind of flavors uh, are coming out of it. But, uh, you know, it's 43% ABV, uh, non-chill filtered, uh, no caramel added. So you can definitely tell that there's no caramel added into that. Because Notice it's another 500 ml Australian bottle. Another 500 ml Australian bottle. Australia clearly likes the 500 ml bottles. Well, it's actually interesting. One of the reasons why they do that is to limit the amount of tax they have to pay. So the tax man does not miss you if you're a distiller in Australia. They get you on every stage of, uh, of the process. So it's basically about how much alcohol is in it and what is the volume. Absolutely. So, Makes sense. yeah, they try and limit it as much as possible. It doesn't mean that we necessarily save on price, unfortunately, as much as I would like to. Um, now, being that it is from Tasmania, it's actually made from 100% uh, Tasmanian brewer's barley uh, and uh, glacier water uh, out of the Clyde River. So quite interesting that it's it's always got a bit of a backstory, you know that with most whiskies that you try. Um, but uh, yeah, th this one this one's probably going to be... Uh, I'm not sure uh, with, with the non. Um, the, the flavors kind of put me off a little bit. Uh, the, I think I need to... Bourbon cast just strikes me as potentially going to be sweet, caramel. Sweet that's kind caramel, of, yeah. That's about, that's all I've got an expectation for everything else, so i see how we go. Yeah, yeah, I suppose we're, yeah. we're going to have to just sort of get stuck in and, and see what we find uh, with this one. Now, we, we haven't really done too much, um, I suppose, legwork on, on the different flavors that we're going to get out of this one. Uh, really wanted it to express itself um, yeah. and, and sort of see what, what it had to offer. Um, but... Uh, See how we go. Yeah. So, Nantes Distillery actually was is built on the Nantes Estate, I believe, uh, which was kind of early 1820s. I think it was established in Tasmania by Welsh settlers because Nantes, ooh, Nantes in Welsh actually means stream, which kind of plays in nicely to kind of Scotch and whiskey, where everyone calls whiskey the water of life. Kind of this is means stream, so it kind of has that theme to it. Um, so, I, I like the kind of poetry attached to that. Um, I think the distillery first started actually producing in 2008 and it took them, I think we've been their fourth year running Jim, Jim Murray's the guy, is it? The, the whiskey kind of connoisseur I believe, uh, he gave it a rating of 95 and a half out of 100 so it was basically ranked in the top 50 whiskies in the world at the time when it first came out, to, well by the 2012 one I think it was their single malt mm. uh, American wood bourbon cask as well so they've got some kind of quality background behind them. Not without their own controversy. No, definitely. We'll get into that after we have a bit of a taste. There is some issue. There has been some issues in the past with this distillery. Allegedly. No, it's not alleged. Parts of it are alleged, but the no. whole thing is not alleged. That is... I'm, I'm struggling to find much on the nose. Really? I'm finding really different to everything. Like, anything we've shot so far, this is very different to me. I, I'm getting honey. I'm getting like a sweet honey. Um, I, like a, I don't know if licorice is the word. It's like a lacquer, a really like faint it's something like lacquer. that, isn't it? Remember that Japanese whiskey, the Kuro we did, and how that was kind of the nail varnish a bit, mm. like a sweet version of that. Mm -hmm. that it's not that it's, was it, so intense. This, yeah, this, it, is, this is kind of like an off, I'm mild version of yeah. that in some ways. The kind of the, the lacquer to it. It's, no, not, it's not licorice. It's no fumes. It's something. It's very subtle. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to... Um... This is bourbon cask, right? Mm-hmm. Because the flavour smells to me like a sherry or something. Like it's whiny mm. is what I'm getting, which is really... Grapes. I must be clearly off. off Nothing but grapes on the palate. Mm. Yeah. Like 
Not even I like don't full know grape. How I feel about this grape skin. So a little bit tangy, a little bit dry. Oh, that is chalky, chalky, chalky. Mm -hmm. It's definitely what I'm getting there. Um, yeah, like it's meant to kind of get a bit of vanilla, caramel, oh, you said with bourbon, but yeah, just a little bit. It's very subtle, but yeah, definitely wine. Hmm. I can't. I can't find any bourbon. No, definitely not. Right, like that vanilla is so subtle in comparison to the wine, or kind of the grape flavor attached to it. Yeah. That's um. I don't know how I feel about this one. Yeah, I mean, I've got the light honey in there and everything, but oh. it's not really revealing itself anymore. I'm, I am going to get a little bit of water. I, mm, it's not that. something that I usually do. Um, to be honest, I'm I'm usually okay without it, but with this particular one. Uh, just give it a couple of drops, just because. Yeah, a little bit more than that. Try and open it up a bit. I can't get past the grape. It is such an intense grapey flavor. Yeah, it's I like really it. Interesting. I would have picked this to be a sherry mm -hmm. or something, not a bourbon cask. They do do a sherry cask, yeah. um, I believe, which is why I'm making that comment. It's almost like we got, got the wrong bottle. Yeah, but maybe, maybe they put the wrong label on on the bottle. I maybe? don't think so, but. Wow, it's yeah, not it'd what be, I expected at all. It'd be interesting to know like uh, how how long they were aged in the um, bourbon casks as well. Yeah, it doesn't say. As I said, it's like got it's no only open on um, eleven years in total, right? So yeah. it can't be that old. Can't be that old, but still, eight year olds they they do they do well. Ooh, I get a bit um, more bourbon on the nose now. It's opened up a bit. Yes, I bit, do. Yeah, you yeah. definitely get, you notice bourbon a lot more than you, you dropped more. it down. Yes. Get a bit more honey now. I still kind of get that almost chalky feel in your mouth or something odd. Yeah. A little bit spicy, not too bad, but... I've got to say, I prefer it mm. now that it's watered down a bit. I do it's, as well. It's definitely opened up a it's lot more. It, it's yeah. much more pleasant. It's opened it up. Uh, it's not just 43% ABV. Um, probably it's where, where the sort of heat, the spiciness is supposed to be. Um, yeah, the spiciness stays on the tongue a bit. A little bit peppery, not like not that kind mm. of spice. Like something there, right? Yeah. yeah. It's um a little bit woody, a little bit more earthy. The grape flavour's gone completely to me almost. You reckon? In, compa the, in comparison. Yeah, like, there's no finish of grape at all. No. Um, the smell's definitely moved more towards bourbon. Yeah. Yeah, that sweetness, that um that soft sweetness. Mm. And the flavour's gone, you said kind of more spicy or something it was yeah. very lightly but the the wine kind of grapey flavor is completely gone i can't notice it yeah anymore. the spiciness is just sort of lingered on the tongue just a little bit like probably a little bit more than i would want um realistically uh, it does have a longish finish doesn't yeah it? yeah i do i do like sort of more of a smooth mm. finish um interesting expression though um yeah I, i'd really be interested to learn a little bit more about uh, about this particular one um, yeah, and given the colour, colors. given the flavour that yeah. it's got coming out of it, um, you know, what, what they have actually done to, to sort of create such a combination would be quite interesting to um, to just sort of understand and know a little bit, I reckon. I've got to say, to begin with, I don't think I would have drunk this again, but once it's watered down, I'd happily try to get, well, happily finish my bottle at yeah. some point. <laughs> but um, I think it needs, just for my palate and just the way I prefer it, it needs a little bit to be opened up a bit more. Otherwise, it's just not... I'm not a big wine fan to begin with, so... No, no, and, and it, it leaves something. you searching for it as well without being yeah, opened it, it's, up. it's just odd. Because I was trying to get more out yeah. of it. I was really trying to squeeze something from it. Um, but, uh, yeah, not uh, not complex as, a, as an expression. Um, or maybe too complex for us. Or potentially, right? <laughs> um, you know, tell us what you, you get. Yeah, um, if you've tried if it, you've tried let us it. know. Yeah, let We're us really know. really interested to see other people's kind of impressions of this because yeah. it's very different to what we've tried so far. Yep. The only thing I can think of is just as unique in some ways was the Starwood Ginger, but that was specifically designed to yes. be really unique and exactly. gingery and spicy. With this, I thought it's kind of going to be more mainstream because you had bourbon cask other ones before. Yeah. It's not as different as this feels. No, no. Like you, so far, anyway. You basically, you have a, a good foundation of whiskey and then you have like... Um, undertones of bourbon as it's aged yeah. more, uh, you know, in the barrel. It's maybe more caramel, vanilla, kind of the Swedish, yeah. 
Sweet-ish, not Swedish. And like, given that that this is going to be interacting more with its environment, with the wood and, and whatever yeah, states the that they put inside the altitude, it, et cetera, yeah. Um, yeah, I would just expect maybe a little bit more of a hit. We've got some Sullivan's Cove coming up, and they yes. they can get very expensive, but we've got some around kind of that same price point of two hundred dollars. Yeah, the it's recent uh, expression of double cask, which is um, so what, a brandy double cask, I believe, and then a single malt mm -hmm. ten year double cask, I think. Yeah, but we're going to try in some future episodes. Very um, much looking forward, and to they're that. sitting like a slightly more expensive, similar price tag. So I'm really interested to try those. And the Cavalier ones that we've done in a previous episode, they're about half the price almost. Yeah. So and then yeah, that was exactly. one of my favourites by far that we've tried. Yeah, and one of those ones Definitely. that you can just continue drinking. But this one, it's it's very unique, very interesting. Yep. Um, and as I said, one of the reasons why I really love Australian whiskies is because you do get this uniqueness out yeah. of it. Well, originally when we first actually got this one, we started doing some research, and we thought the uh, distillery didn't exist anymore because the original founder had to go on a personal bankruptcy and a variety of other things happened and the kind of the distillery started to go under. Um, but I think in 2017, end of 2000-ish, in 2016, it was bought out by the Australian Whiskey Holdings, like a publicly listed Australian whiskey company that owns Lark, Overeem, um, Old Kemp Town, I believe. So they own this now as well. So it's, it's kind of back up and running. Um, they're promoting it is like the, all their other ones, so it's not going under. Um, if you see it when you're out and you want to give it a try, I definitely wouldn't say no. It's yep. definitely worth a try with its flavor profiles. All right, guys, pleasure having you. See you next time. That's it from us, see ya, bye. Hey, thanks for joining us at the Better Out Than In. Remember, if you like this video, to like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. If you have any feedback or suggestions, leave us a comment or drop us a line. The Better Out Than In supports the responsible service and consumption of alcohol. If you or a friend would like any more information about this, please visit drinkwise.org.au or your local alcohol support organization.